get your opinion then. Burke Grossman is here being presented by the Total T Clinic. Let me get your opinion on what happened with the Chargers last <laughs> week. Because we were together at the Halloween party Saturday night, but Sunday the Chargers are playing in Denver. They've got a monster lead on the road. Denver doesn't have a great quarterback. They don't have a great team. They don't have their best defensive players. In the second half, with a monster lead, the Chargers start charging, start Spanosing. And then on the last play, with like a second to go, this kid Drew Locke throws a touchdown pass, ties the game, kick the PAT, win the game, get on with it. The Chargers wow. have been so historically bad. The numbers earlier in the week, Alex, we talked about were like – four games of having 16 or 17 point leads and win probabilities into the mid nineties. And the chargers have become historically, well, they've just become historic chokers, epic chokers, 38, 38, one score losses the last five seasons. So what do you say about, uh, about this charger team? And, and, you know, the, the talk now about is Anthony Lynn, the right coach, which I don't ever think you, yeah. I mean, you know, his first year he might've been, but, you know, it's one thing if you lose those leads to, and, and you can use it as an excuse, like historical quarterbacks, maybe the three, you know, Mahomes will go down at the end of his career as one of the best ever. Breeze already is, and, and Tom Brady already is. So you can make an excuse that, oh, these are the three greatest quarterbacks. But when Minshaw almost does it with, with Jacksonville and then Drew Locke, I mean, I don't know. I don't know really. I don't, you think Alabama would lose a 21 point lead to a Drew Locke quarterback? I mean, there's colleges that can cover that, but it's again, it goes to the same thing. You you watch it every time. Gus Bradley sits in the same zone defense the whole game. I've seen high school coaches that that you know actually do stuff different. He doesn't change anything up. This is the NFL, and and eventually, you know, people figure it out and they go into halftime. They make their adjustments. They don't make any of the Chargers. The Chargers always play scared from a coaching staff, where it's like, hey, we're we're racking it up, 21 points. Let's change our offense. What well, coach does that? If you're if you're doing so well, why would you go start to try to run? I mean, I understand running the clock out, but this is the NFL. You run the clock out in the last four minutes. You don't run start running the clock out at the beginning of the third quarter, and that's what they do every week. It's it's embarrassing. I'm with so you. I'm with yeah. you. It is embarrassing. It isn't. It really is. So so answer the question then. Just jump into it. I said earlier this week that if I'm if I'm running this organization. GM is gone, head coach is gone, and for sure the guy who runs the football operations is gone. There's a problem with the football ops guy. His name is Spano, so he can't go anywhere. But I, I'm, I got a new young toy to play with over the next 10 to 12 to 15 years if that everything goes well. That so creepy. That sounded so – I got a new young toy to play with. I know. You sick, weird. sick man. Yeah. I'm not swinging with you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I agree so, with you. So, so the, here's the problem again. So you, you're right. I mean, if you look at Telesco, he's McCoy and, and a running back coaches are his two coaches that he brought in. I don't think they'll go out and get somebody like the enemy, which they should. Um, you don't hear a bad thing about him anywhere. Um, but the problem is you're right. The general manager should go, the coach should go, but the problem is the owner is more incompetent as an owner than they are as a general manager and a coach. I mean, they're at least average. He's beyond below average. So I don't think it's going to happen. I really don't. So, so you know, I think Eric the question Bien-Ami, we should, I think the question quick, we should. Brown, real quick. I'm sorry. Real quick. Eric B is very interesting. Isn't B from LA? Like I'm I know, he, went sure. to, he went to Colorado, but he played for the Chargers. Right. So he, so he, yeah. I'm almost sure he's from LA. He played for, for the Chargers when they were in San Diego and was part of the Super Bowl team in 94 and has gone on to become a great coach, uh, a great offensive coordinator under Andy Reid. If you're the Chargers and, and if the enemy's from LA, I'm almost sure he is. And because of his, of his history within the organization, the enemy is the perfect guy, the perfect guy. If you're trying to, if you want a guy who has been tutoring Patrick Mahomes to come in and take over because you've got this kid, Justin Herbert, Eric Bieniemy would be the it's smartest the move they could ever make. But Which you got to do it. You got to ask yourself this question. Go ahead. He's going he's gonna to have many suitors. And if I'm him, do I want to be in charge of a team in New York like the Jets? Or do I want to go to an organization like the Chargers? And we, we on this show, Bert it has personal experience. It's not a well-run organization. Is it as bad as the Jets? Because the Jets are no. going to have the number one pick. 
So if you're sitting in New York, if, if, if you're him and you have the choice between coaching in New York or coaching in Los Angeles, and now you start looking at the owners, you start looking at what's on the roster, if you're him, what are you going to do? I, if I, he may not want to coach the Chargers because if he's been in that organization, he knows. That's the question. Bert, he, that's the, a great question by Browner. Do you think Eric Bieniemy? knowing what he knows about the Spanos is because he was a player for the Chargers and the bulk of his career was spent with the Chargers. Do you think Eric Bieniemy, and just, just you're, you're making, you're, you're taking a guess here. Do you think yeah. Eric Bieniemy would look at the Chargers and go, I'd love to be able to go home. I mean, I'd love to be able to live in Southern California. And um, he's from a place called La Puente, California. I'd have to look that up on a map to find out where that is exactly. Uh, east of, uh, 20 miles east of downtown L.A., 20 miles east. Okay, so Biennemi's from L.A. He played for the Chargers in San Diego. He was part of, of, of your team. He was a teammate of yours. He was a teammate of juniors. He was part of the Super Bowl team. Do you think just knowing Biennemi and knowing the Chargers – that if the enemy had other options, even if it was the Jets, that he'd rather go coach the Jets than coach the Chargers. No, I think I think he ideally he would want to coach the Chargers. And you know, I got to play with him, I think, two years, but he has that factor where everybody liked him. He didn't have a single person that didn't like him. Um, and he's carried that on as a coach. I think the problem, I mean, the Jets are a disaster. And if you look at the openings this year, it's gonna be all disasters. Chargers are a disaster, I think, because of coaching and a general manager, but they have talent. I mean, it's not – you see it. They run these leads up, but they lose them because of coaching pretty much. So I, if, I think that would be attractive to them. But if, you're, but if you're saying the problem is the general manager and the, and the person in charge of football operations, I don't think those two guys are going anywhere. So I don't, if, Yeah, but those two guys only – their only hand in what happens is hiring a head coach – when, when it comes time to play. I mean, granted, they all draft together and do other things, but this is a coaching staff, like I said, that doesn't do anything at halftime, and you don't even see that in youth football anymore. If you watch Gus Bradley, it's the same BS zone the whole game. It's, it's, it's embarrassing. And if you watch, like I said, you don't start running the clock down the start of the third quarter in the NFL. That is insane. And they do so, that every week, and it's the same, I don't same know why thing guys, every time. I don't know why you guys want the Chargers to make all these changes. I'm never having more fun than what I am this year. I think they should sign Anthony Lynn to a five-year contract until it keep Telesco until he wants to quit because I'm having a grand old time watching this every week. <laughs> yeah, and ultimately, you know, the other point is ultimately he might want to go to the Chargers, but the Jets will pay double what the Chargers will pay. That's the other part. The like, Jets Chargers will, aren't, aren't going to pay for a head coach. The Jets, will, the Jets will pay more, and I'm pretty sure he'll have some input on who the general manager is. But you guys yeah. are talking about the Chargers and Dean Spanos. The, you – like the fact of the matter is this, and we all know this is a fact. They're never going to get the top coach available because they'll never even interview them. No. Like that's just like so. When you guys talk about Eric Bieniemy, like he may not even get in the door. They're going to go look for another milk toast, like bland, like nothing special head coach. You had Norv Turner, Mike McCoy, and Anthony Lynn, who everybody was like, "Oh, Anthony Lynn, you know, a little different, like black guy, kind of charismatic." No, turns out same old, same <laughs> no. old, yeah, same old thing. And you know that yeah, the a little thing. different. He's a black guy. No, yeah, yeah, he, yeah had, he, had some, he had like some charisma. He came in. Even Scott was like, "Dude, if we were in San Diego, we would have loved this guy." Turns out, not, not really. Not, not to mention Browner. Just by the way, you realize that the Chargers just look back in their history. They've never had a black head coach till Anthony Lynn, which is okay. A lot of teams maybe probably fit that profile. Right. They've never had a black quarterback either. Um, ever. That's bad. And so, well, Hi, I'm Rod. just saying. Well, this was going to be the first time. Fair enough. Yeah. Good yeah, point. Yeah. So my. All I'm saying is you're right. He was different. Anthony Lynn was a, was a different outside-the-box hire. No, we thought he was different. We thought he was different. Yeah. We thought the- he, I mean, but again, have you ever seen an NFL team? Imagine this. You're, you're moving to the biggest or second biggest, whether it's New York or L.A. market, brand-new stadium somebody else built, brand-new start everything over, and you, most people say go get somebody like Gruden and pay him money because that's going to lift it up in the interest. You go get a fired – running back position coach that has never been a coordinator, never called a play, never ran a meeting, never did anything from a team that let him go that, as a position coach. And you make him your hire. I've never seen a position coach that has never interviewed for a head coaching job or anything else be hired. And that's, that's the charger thing because he's the cheapest one. He's not going to ask for any money. Yeah. So, so why would they get the enemy? So let me ask everybody here a question. Do you think he'll get a second job? Anthony Lynn? Lynn? Yes. 
Not yeah, as a head coach. coach. Not maybe. as a head coach. No, no, no. I'm talking about as a head coach. Do nope. you think he would a second job as no. a head coach somewhere? Nope. His call on Tyrod Taylor starting and, and still dying in that ditch like two, three weeks later as uh, Herbert was making all – look, is my dog going to the bathroom? Herbert making all kinds of records. I mean, that kid sets a record every week. I mean, it's historical what he's doing. All right, let me, let me just throw for this that, at you. No, just for that call alone, the tie right over him, he'll never get another coaching job. Let me tell you guys this. I'm going to take a guess. None of you guys saw this yesterday. I happen to be reading this, but here, here's the story. The LA Times yesterday has one of their reporters – who writes a, an article, his name's Dylan Hernandez. Most people know him, I think, because he covers the Dodgers. But he wrote a piece yesterday in the LA Times that now is the time for the Chargers to overtake the Rams as the number one football team of LA. And his, his rationale was the Rams came home. It, there wasn't some monster celebration that the Rams came back to town. They went to a Super Bowl quickly, which got people fired up. And they're on the decline ever since. The Chargers, on the other hand, this is, is his point. The Chargers have the better of the two young quarterbacks. The Chargers have an exciting player in Herbert who has movie star good looks. He actually went on to say the Chargers have really cool uniforms, and then he got you with this, and the Chargers' prices are so much cheaper than the Rams. So this guy wrote this piece in the LA Times saying, this is the moment that the Chargers have been waiting for. And I'm going... Yeah, but a couple of problems. They don't win. Now, yeah. the, Rams, the Rams had a disappointing loss last week in Miami, but they're still, I think, 5-2 and two or 5-3. and three. I think they're also, too, like the, everyone always neglects to talk about, like, like, for a lack of, I don't even really know what to say, the cool factor of being a Charger fan. Like, it's not cool Doesn't being exist. a Charger fan. Like, it's yeah. not cool being a Clipper fan. It's just not the way it works, you know? Like, Whoa, so when now. you have... When you have a team that has history like the Rams, who have won Super Bowls, who were already in L.A., who have, like, Sean McVay, like, there's, like, a cool factor to it. There is no – yeah, you get made fun of if you're a Charger fan. Like, really? Why? That's the first question. If you, if you tell someone, why are you – or, or, or whose team are you? Like, oh, I like the Rams. Like, oh, that's cool. Like, the first question in L.A., if someone's like, oh, I'm a Charger fan, why? Yeah. And the other part is you, you say the ticket price – that's uh, diehards don't care about the ticket price. Lakers tickets are always going to be higher than the Wizards. I mean, it's, it's just the way it is, but or the Clippers even. But no, nobody's going to because the charge is cheaper. I'm going to become a Charger fan. That doesn't happen. You no, think if, if the Cowboys, if, I know, but if Cowboys or the Giants move to Philadelphia, you think people would jump off the Eagles bandwagon and, and go be a Cowboys fan if the t- tickets were cheaper? It just doesn't work that way. I'm with you. I am. Burke Grossman is here, presented by the Total T Clinic. Okay, so. Here we go. Now this week, Chargers Raiders. And there's nobody in SoFi Stadium, but if there were, I would just anticipate that Raider fans would completely take over that stadium. Oh, yeah, that think, would even be close. I mean, L.A. is still Raider country. It's not Charger country. It's never going to be, uh, at least the way I see it. So, That's another thing we haven't talked about with these rookie quarterbacks. Sorry to interrupt you. No, go ahead. We, we brought it up with, like, Will Myers during the season. It's like, is he playing well because there's nobody in the stands? Like, like when we gave, we gave a lot of talk to that talk topic and we're seeing Herbert kill it. We're seeing Burrow kill it. You know, is that a factor? Like you're not going to Pittsburgh and the steel curtain and like all these crazy fans at Heinz field. You're not going as Justin Herbert anywhere. And there's no, there's no pressure. You're just in an empty stadium. How much is that factored into that great play? That, that factors in a lot. I mean, you automatically get three points or seven points to the home team. Usually if you're half good, I mean, that's the home field advantage. It's definitely a factor, but. Yeah, you know, I don't know if I don't know if once the ball snap, it's a factor. I mean, it, granted, people screaming and everything else makes it hard with the calls, the audibles. Rookies don't really audible, so it's probably not a big deal. But when you're dropping dimes and you're back there, it's you're still getting Aaron Donald in your face, and that's much more um, scary than than a drunk guy up in the section eight. So yeah, I, I think it does matter a little bit, but it also matters that they didn't have preseason. I mean, the fact that he can light it up without a preseason, without a real camp, without everything else is, is amazing to me, both these quarterbacks. Bert, we were having this conversation earlier in the week. Jump in on it, and then we'll, we'll let you actually get back to your real life. Antonio Brown is going to join the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this week. Mm-hmm. What do you predict will happen? Will Antonio Brown become a star that he once was? Will he be a diva and a pain in the ass and not make it? 
Will Tom Brady control the situation? I'm just curious, like, how do you think the Antonio Brown thing plays out? You've been around plenty of superstar divas in your career. What do you say? I actually think he'll, he'll be, uh, I don't know, after this year, but for the remainder of the year, I think he'll be on his best behavior. Um, you know, Tom Brady has that aura of, you know, controlling things and, and being around. But, you know, if you watch the Giants game, um, Tampa Bay's got a good record, but they're not close to competing with, you know, Kansas City or Pittsburgh or um, who's the other one? It's really good. The Cowboys. The Cowboys. Oh, Cowboys. Oh, Cowboys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so mm-hmm. and yeah, with, their, with their matches, fourth quarterback that? with their fourth yeah. quarterback now I, I, what's his name Bert? who's the quarterback who's the cowboys quarterback what's his name uh isn't it blaine mm. garrett or one of those guys cooper <laughs> rush yeah they got it they got a new one this week it either is going to be garrett gilbert or cooper rush and the and the cowboys are playing at the steelers if you're cooper uh, Rush or Garrett Gilbert, you're like, hey, Coach McCarthy, you know it would be a really good idea against Pittsburgh this weekend? Why don't you start Ben DiNucci? Mm-hmm. That'd be it. Because yeah. it doesn't matter who plays quarterback. We got no chance yeah. of winning, but I got a chance. Let's ruin to somebody else. Yeah. yeah. Let's ruin yeah. somebody else this week. Right. Run it 40 times. Yeah. I don't, and you saw that DiNucci, Uncle Rico sidearm throw. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the difference we talk. So if you're an offensive coordinator and you got somebody like Mahomes, he's brilliant. He's going to make that work and it's going to be on every sports center. But if you don't have Mahomes and, and that guy tries it and you called that play, it, you're just a meme now or, you know, everybody's making fun of you and, and you're Uncle Rico. But that's the difference in having a quarterback when you're a coordinator. All right. Burke Grossman this week, bringing it strong. I am. I know you are. <laughs> I know you are. Took an Excedrin. I know. Are you and me? Caffeine. And our girlfriends, are we, or your fiance, Easy my girlfriend, creepy. are Easy you, creepy. are we going to all like go out for dinner? Or are we going to hang at a bar and put cash Whoa. on the bar? Whoa. I mean, I don't Alex, know this sounds like code, doesn't it? Is this code for something? This is like, how much are you going to whine and dine me before we start? Wow. Wow. You sick, sick man. <laughs> you sick man. <laughs> I don't even want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Last thing, Alex, how much time do I have? Uh, minus two minutes. Oh, really? <laughs> oh. Yes. All right, we got to go. Bert, thank you for being here. We'll see you later. Thank you.